Can't forget to. Oh! I'm back home in Florida. Beautiful, critically endangered. What an iconic animal. I love spinning cobras. I just don't like how they spin. Nothing cooler than a cobra when it puts up. Woo! We're gonna put Allison and Kobe together, so maybe we'll get baby black mambas. Woo! Look at that beautiful big black mamba. The black mambas are now mating. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm back home in Florida at the facility, hanging out with Timmy and Kameo, and uh, I got some business to take care of today, but first, let me make sure that my boy has a good carrot in him so he's having a good day, because a carrot a day will keep, uh, will, uh, uh, mm, keep the vet away? Yeah, oh yeah, you know, you can't, uh, you know, I love to travel, but it's always good to come home into my animals and get kisses and cuddle. Ooh, what did you just put in my hair? Ooh, ooh, it's stringy. Anyways, beautiful people, I'm going to check up on all the crocodilians, and uh, we have a snake situation to deal with, so I'll see you guys by the crocs. Looks like Nadia is doing good, just catching some heat right now. Looking beautiful, gorgeous Siamese crocodile from Southeast Asia. And these guys are actually native to Thailand too, but they're so endangered you don't see them too often. How you doing, baby? Oh, oh she's not happy, she's not happy. <laughs> oh, Nadia, I thought you missed me. Want to come in the water? What's up, mama? Beautiful, critically endangered. <laughs> Why are you trying to eat me? Don't you know I love you? You're so cranky. And Nadia's doing good. She's super happy, super healthy. <laughs> oh! Right here, we got all the little baby American crocodiles. You can see they're basking, having a good time, getting nice and big. Let me put this top down so you guys can see real quick. All these guys have fat little pot bellies because we've been feeding them real good. You can see this guy's huge. Look at him, he's like a big, fat pig. He's been eating lots of quail chicks and shrimp from the bait shop. We feed these guys really good, especially when they're young. They have a fast metabolism and they're going through growth spurts, so you want to feed them every couple days. That is a thick looking American crocodile. He's going to be a huge one day. We still don't know the sexes of all these little crocs in here. Right now we have a total of like 12 or 13 American crocodiles. Look at you, fat boy. We got Bridget the Broad Snout hanging out, enjoying her day. We got the beautiful giant Amazon river turtle basking with the Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman. All the crocodilians are good. I just popped open the lid for Anakin so we can get a good look at him. He's looking beautiful. Let's see how he's doing today. Ooh, look at that sexy saltwater crocodile. I cannot wait for this guy to be over 15 feet long, being the biggest reptile at the facility and the biggest reptile in the world. Crocodilus porosus, on average, get 15 to 18 plus feet with the record being literally 21 feet long, a monster caught in the Philippines. I mean, look at this. Look how badass this crocodile is. He's getting huge and he's beautiful too. Like, look at those golds on his body. He's gonna be a badass crocodile when he's full grown. And of course, we can't forget about Ziggy the American Croc. My OG crocodile that I've had since I got my permits. Look at that beautiful coloration on her eyes. Can't wait to get her into a big exhibit. Finally gonna get all these new exhibits started. Getting all these crocodiles bumped out now that they're outgrowing their little baby pens. Everyone's gonna have a nice enclosure pretty soon. Damn, Miss Toothy, you thick girl. You guys enjoying the trees? Huh? Big babies. Big babies. Love you guys. Ooh, and I can't forget to. Oh, I can't. <laughs> I was just saying, I, I can't not say hello to Choby, the American alligator, the big bull alligator that we rescued from going to a hunting ranch. And uh, he's just, I guess, enjoying the sun and a little bit of shade right now. Wow. What a, what a way to say. What a way to say hello to everyone. All right, so I'll leave him alone. We gotta go into the snake house and take care of some business. Don't worry, Kameo, I'm good. I don't need your backup. Dude, if I was being attacked, I'd be screwed. You literally just sat there and chewed on that carrot. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. We got Alex over here. I got a good spot to make sure I'm nice and safe while dealing with these snakes. First, we're gonna deal with something super easy, the world's most venomous snake, the inland taipan. We gotta make sure this guy does not have any mites because the king cobra that was infested with mites was right here and we're decalling that enclosure while the king cobra is soaking in the Nick solution. So we're gonna try and get this tie pan. This is honestly dumb. I should be getting a bigger container. Uh, I was gonna put the tie pan in this. It's too, you know, no, we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna get a container from right here. Let's we'll see. What? Nothing. <laughs> Let's see how he's doing. Usually, 
He's a little whippy, so I don't handle him too often. But uh, we'll see how he is today. Man, he is thick. Look at that. Beautiful inland taipan, the world's most venomous snake drop for drop. You can see he's trying to get a little bit black on that head. They get an old black head with a beige body as they go through their transitional uh, phase from summer to winter. So it's like an old black to a nice beige body during the summer. So he's actually starting to look a little bit darker in the head, lighter in the body. There we go, I'll get him right into there. Oh, <laughs> that's why we didn't put him in the tiny container because we knew he was gonna start doing stuff like this. There we go, we're just gonna put the lid on part of it so he can't get out. No, he got out. <laughs> All right, world's most venomous snake, take two. World's most venomous snake, take. Oh, come on, just stay in there. Oh, oh, stay in there, stop. Perfect. Drop for drop, the deadliest snake on the planet when it comes to its venom toxicity, the inland taipan from the outback of Australia. So we want him to soak. We just want to double check to make sure he doesn't have mites. That will make some of the mites drown, fall off in the water, and it'll be easy to see if he actually has mites on him. Uh, but so far it looks pretty good. I don't see mites on his body or anything like that. You already got fresh water the other day. I'm gonna do some spot cleaning in the meantime, so we'll leave this taipan right here. Quick little clarification, I did make an episode on how to treat for mites and I was treating the king cobra and the one ball python that has mites in the collection. Sadly, the footage came out super blurry because I was doing it by myself. So that episode got canned and that's why we're now skipping to this now where we're checking up on all the snakes. So, so far just one king cobra and one ball python that have mites that are being treated for. And I was just checking on a couple other snakes to double check to make sure it hasn't spread to other enclosures. A little update on the baby king that we're treating for mites. So he's been sitting out of the next treatment for uh, probably like eight to 12 hours now. And you can see that there's tiny little black dots all over that paper towel. Those are the dead mites. So the next is working and he's gonna be shedding his skin soon. So he'll have a whole new coat without any eggs without any uh, the mites crawling around, so they'll be good to go. We're gonna put him back into his enclosure with some water later today. We got the ball python still in here, sitting in the next, I'm gonna have to rinse them off and put them in a nice enclosure. For now, let's take care of the beautiful Gaboon Vipers. We have this female and male right here. They went to the bathroom, they shed their skin. It's time to make sure they have a nice enclosure to hang out in. Now that we're back in town, we can take care of maintenance. When I leave town, I have people who can take care of my crocodilians that are small, make sure they get fed the owl, the camels, but I do not have anyone messing with my venomous reptiles unless they are fully licensed and it's less of a liability. There's very few people, even with permits, that I trust to work with these venomous reptiles. Things like the Gaboon Vipers are a bit easier to deal with, even though these guys have the world's longest fangs and most venom in one bite. Uh, but most of my collection is the world's deadliest snakes. And a lot of them are really cranky. You don't want to make a mistake with the snakes I have in this room because one bite from a plain black snake, a black mamba, a taipan, and it's a death sentence, especially here in the United States where your hospitals are not trained to deal with these exotic snake bites. This is my male gaboon viper, beautiful looking animal. Hopefully these guys are mite free. I'm gonna have to take a close look at every snake in this house and make sure nobody has mites on them because we might have to treat all these snakes. That was not a mite joke, just be saying mite, okay? You got a little shed skinner right in here. You, oh, it smells really spicy. It smells like he crapped in it, but that's a nice looking Gaboon Viper shed. We'll give that to a fan of the show. That's very nice. And I'm gonna clean this cage up and I'll see you guys in a split. Whoa. That's a spicy meatball, holy. Ooh. We're gonna put these Gaboon Vipers back. They have a nice clean area to go back to. Yes, tell me more. Yes, there we go. I'm just gonna gently hook from underneath. Just a nice scooping method. We wanna scoop the snake. There we go, nice scoop. There we go, look at that. He's a little underway. We wanna get him to eat some more. Maybe the female stole some food from him. But look at that beautiful Gaboon Viper. An iconic snake that I've grown up obsessed with. And it's crazy to think these guys are small. They can actually get like six feet long with a massive head as big or bigger than a King Cobra's head. Look at that. Ooh. That is such a beautiful snake, the Gaboon Viper. What an iconic animal. You gotta love the big body, beautiful vipers. Real thick. There we go. Get a lock on that, make sure it's nice and secure. Next is somebody who's not that chill. This is the albino monoclip cobra that produced that beautiful uh, little head for albino. Oh, he's <laughs> a, little, a little spring of joy. <laughs> hey buddy, you wanna? Come on, let's, uh, let's talk about your 
Lord and Savior, Steve Irwin. Come here. Ooh, beautiful albino model. <laughs> they love to slip off the hook. Gorgeous looking albino model of Cobra. Eee. Love these guys, but gotta be careful because they like to slide off that hook. Real healthy looking snake. I was thinking about maybe breeding the monocles again, uh, but there's not a high demand for them in the in the venom trade for milking snakes. So unless there's a demand for them in the future, I'm gonna not breed them for a little bit. There we go, get that cover in there. Oop, you stay in there. We got a nice shed. The snake's been grown like crazy. He's always willing to eat. He's a little nutty guy. I'm gonna clean up this enclosure. And I'll see you guys in a moment. Yeah! All right, beautiful people. Let's put this albino monocled cobra back in this enclosure. Come here, buddy. Old sunshine. It's a, it's a very cranky snake, right? Beautiful snake. Look at that. Woo! Nothing cooler than a cobra when it huds up and flexes those ribs to show off that hood. Woo! Mamma mia, spicy snake. Let's get this beautiful animal back in the enclosure. Super toxic cobra. Uh, one of the most toxic cobras in the world is actually a variation of the monocled cobra. It's called the Supan or the Sufan cobra, and it's from a district in Thailand or a province in Thailand where these monocled cobras are just so venomous. They're almost their own different species. They're just so toxic. You wouldn't want to get bit by one of them or any venomous snake because you could lose something. Your life, your fingertip, your sanity, anything. Look at this beautiful black and white spitting cobra hanging out right here. Hello, very crazy snake. Ooh, I'm sorry. This snake was so tiny when I first picked it up and now it is a beast a black and white spitter. Typically these guys will get around like, whew, around like five, maybe five plus feet long. A beautiful animal found in Asia. And these black and white spitters, you can actually find them over in Thailand as well. So typically you get them all black, the cymensis, uh, but then you get black and white like this. And they come from a village in Thailand where they have this cookies and cream coloration. How cool is that? Look at that beautiful snake. Typically it hits up a lot more, but this snake seems to be very reluctant today. Right? Woo! Beautiful cobra. Look at that. How cool is that? I love spitting cobras. I just don't like how they spit. And the good thing is he's not spitting today. So we'll take him just like this. We're going to put him right inside the holding receptacle. There we go. I know you guys are thinking, why don't you use the big holding receptacle? It's big. <laughs> I want to make this quick. That thing's like an ice cream cart to roll around. Love it though. All right, we got a shed skin showing that that snake keeps growing and growing. What's really cool is these black and white snakes that have these patterns, you can clearly see on the body where the pattern is. How cool is that? And then you can see perfectly on the shed, the eye caps, everything. So they have a layer of skin on their eyes that's protective since they don't have eyelids, and they shed that every time they shed their skin. So now we have a good idea of how big he is. Growing like a little weed. All right, I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so let's put this black and white spinning cobra back in his enclosure. Little cookies and cream. Love this snake, so beautiful. Nothing more gorgeous than snakes that are vibrant with these crazy looking colors. All right, hello, don't spit on me. If you spit on me, I'll have to take a shower. There we go, I'm gonna close that glass. Nice and secure, put a lock on that. Oh my, you see, trying to bite my hand, look at that, you see that venom over the glass? Whoa! Oh, why are you trying to bite me? Why don't you love me? Why don't you love me? Huh? Oh, you're so cranky. All right, Pearl, you ready? So, whoa, Pearl is a gorgeous leucistic monocle cobra that Tyler Nolan gave me as a gift for watching his stuff for like half a year. And uh, because this is a female, unrelated to my albino and my normal, and what I'm gonna do is the het for albino that I produced from Big Bertha and Sunshine, we're gonna take that head albino when he's old enough and breed him to this leucistic and see what kind of cool cobra colors we end up getting. Woo! Because why not? We have the snakes, let them breed, let them do what's natural. Look at that, loved leucistics. So you just saw an albino a moment ago, and uh, this is, woo, all right, this is a slippery leucistic. Uh, black or blue eyes with a white body, they look gorgeous. I'm using the old school hook right now. So let me just get them right in there. There we go. Sort of easy. There we go. Nice and secure. And the glass is covered in venom because even though she's not a spitting cobra, she does spit venom. And she's a cobra. So she is technically like a spitting cobra. But she's not that species. So it's insane that she'll get so upset she 
stretches her venom glands and shoots venom on the glass when she strikes at people. So we have to clean that too. Clean up the shed, like always. She sheds like crazy. I got shed all over the place. All right, so let's get Pearl back in her enclosure. Hello, little cranky cobra. Oh yeah, mommy mia. Ooh, <laughs> she's all over the place right now. Oh, did you just spit yeah, venom? Yeah, bro. You little psycho. You need to relax. You need to oop, listen to some jazz music or something. Whoa, I do not like that. I need to go back to the Midwest hooks. Oh my goodness. These older hooks, I forgot how slippery the snakes are. That's why you gotta use the Midwest Tongs equipment. Their hooks are the best when it comes to venom for reptile handling. There you go. We're gonna put Allison and Kobe together. So maybe we'll get baby black mambas in the future. So I'll see you guys in the next clip. Allison's unlocked, cracking her enclosure open so it's an easy transition to move this behemoth of a young male black mamba. He's grown so much in the past three years. It is absurd. These guys have fast metabolism. If you feed them enough, they will achieve 10 plus feet before you know it. So we just wanna go really quick. Woo -hoo -hoo. Look at that beautiful big black mamba. Gorgeous snake, gotta be super careful. I've had close calls with this snake before. Woo, right into the enclosure. Look how much darker he is compared to Allison. That is because he's a South African black mamba and Allison is a Tanzanian, so she has these beautiful white bands going along her body. There you go, buddy. Get your jaw in there. Right in there. And uh, I don't believe we're in mating season right now, but because it was cool uh, the last couple of weeks, maybe it triggered her to ovulate and we get some mating action. He's big enough now where if he wants to, he can make sweet babies with it. There we go. Put a lock on this, make sure it's nice and secure. And we're gonna be keeping an eye on these guys to make sure they're getting along great. There's plenty of space in here for both of them. You know, uh, but we still wanna keep an eye out because black mambas are cannibalistic snake species. Sometimes uh, people will catch them eating other species of venomous snake out in safaris like puff adders and uh, cobra species. So we wanna make sure that Kobe doesn't become a snack. You can actually see that Kobe's on guard right now. He's kind of flaring up his hood, mostly because I was just handling him. And he's just checking out the area. He's actually tasting the air with his tongue right now, figuring out there's a female in the room and hopefully he finds some interest and she finds some interest too. And we'll be breeding black mambas. How cool is that? Everyone in the comments, not cool, not cool. I'm like, epic. <laughs> Guys, I just want to cut into the video real quick to show you that the black mambas are now mating literally an hour later or about two hours later. Look at these guys. I don't want to disturb them, but you can see that Kobe started to court Allison and she seems to be pretty willing because they are starting to wrap their tails. They're not locked up, but they're preparing to lock up where they just finished. So that's awesome. They love each other. So cool. Back to the video. All right. So we got little Stevie right here. And uh, what we'll do is we'll just open the enclosure, put them back, and we'll check the water after to see if there's any anything going on with that water, if there's any dead mites sitting in there. Look at that. World's most venomous snake, drop for drop, and it hasn't killed a single person. Or maybe Alex, because he's getting kind of close right now. <laughs> Look at that, and that beautiful belly. Orange spotted belly. Such a pretty snake. And these guys can get literally around seven feet long, so it's just a baby. There we go. Get that locked, nice and secure. There we go. Let's check the water. And we have no mites. There we go. Kevin, you hungry? You want a ball python? You want a ball python, Kevin? My beautiful Malaysian King Cobra, Kevin. Got this ball python that was donated by a pet shop that passed away. You hungry? Or is it too intimidating for you? This banana charcoal blast cinnamon bun morph right here. This is too much. What is it, that smell good? It's getting away, it's getting away. Kevin, it's getting away. It's getting away, Kevin, it's getting away. Come on, give it a bite. Oh, he wants to give you a bite. <laughs> he wants to give you a bite. Kish, a little bite on. Kish, kish, kish. Well, it seems like Kevin doesn't want to eat in front of us. Maybe he'll chomp down later, but at least look at the size of this beautiful king cover. Look how massive he is. I love him. He's my favorite snake at the facility. Favorite snake on the planet, the king cobra. Oh, feel fake as Hannah. Look at that big boy. All right, beautiful people. That's going to be it for this episode. I will see you on the next one. Stay beautiful. Stay safe. Woo! And most of all, follow your dreams and stay passionate about what you love. I love working with snakes, and I also love to not get bit. So let's get out of here. Woo! All right, beautiful people. <laughs>
That's all, folks. <laughs> hey, Alex. Oh, no. Subscribe. Uh, we'll kill you. That's a spicy meatball. Oh, yeah.